Physics is a very diverse field with many branches from quantum mechanics to cosmology. We have the traditional framework of dynamical laws since the time of Galileo and Newton to explain this kind of physics. In this framework, given the initial conditions, using these dynamical laws, we can predict the trajectory of objects. For example, when we kick a ball, if we know the initial position and speed, using Newton's law of motion, we can predict its location and speed at any other point in time. This way of doing physics is so successful that we routinely use it to make predictions of what happens at LHC. However, it is not sure that this dynamical approach can capture all physical reality. Constructor theorists argue that it actually cannot. History of Constructor Theory Constructor Theory was first introduced by David Deutsch in 2012. His first paper on constructor theory attempts to build constructor theory as a fundamental branch in physics. David Deutsch is a father and leading figure of quantum computation. He is also a founder of Deutsch algorithm, one of the first quantum computing algorithms in history. This gives us more reason to take constructor theory seriously. Chiara Marletto became interested in constructor theory in 2011, focusing initially on its applications to quantum information and theoretical biology. Later, Chiara and Deutsch explored constructor theory rigorously and published another paper in 2014. Now, she has been working full-time on constructor theory as a postdoctoral researcher. What is constructor theory? Now, let's dive into what really is in constructor theory. In constructor theory, fundamental objects are transformations that are called tasks. And constructor theory is all about what tasks are possible, what are impossible, and why. Let's take the example of rolling dice. In the beginning, let's say it had number 3 on the upturned face. After the die is rolled, it has the number 5 on its up face. This transform is called a task. So, a formal task is the specification of a physical transformation on some physical system. The object that is changed is called a substrate. In our example, a die is a substrate. The properties that describe the substrate are called attributes. For dice, attributes can be shape, color, size, and what number the upturned face shows. So, a task is a description of the physical transformation on some substrate, with some input attribute, and some output attribute. In our universe, most things don't perform tasks reliably. Something that performs the task reliably, we call it a constructor. A constructor is an object that can perform the task and stays the same after doing it. So, after performing the task, it should be able to do the task over and over again. That's what performing the task reliably means. In our example, a constructor could be a tiny robot rolling the dice. So far, we are talking about details of constructor theory. But now, let's see if we can actually find some applications of it. Constructor theory should be able to tell us more than what dynamical theories predict. We still don't have a theory of quantum gravity. In particular, we don't know if gravity has a quantum nature. We don't have any good dynamical theories to explain it. Constructor theory might fortunately come to the rescue. There is a physical law that says that if we have two quantum systems A and B, then a system M can entangle these two quantum systems only if the system itself is quantum. So, here a constructor is a system M and a task is entangling two quantum systems A and B. In the language of constructor theory, a task is possible only if the constructor itself is quantum. Now if we have two tiny masses, which have quantum features, located at some distance which is only interacting to each other by gravity. If there exists entanglement between these two masses, then we can make the conclusion that gravity is quantum in nature. This proposal has been seriously considered as an experimental test of quantum gravity by papers like Marletto and Vedral and Bose. With all these successes, however, constructor theory is not far from criticisms. First of all, it is difficult to understand what even is a constructor theory, and if it will be useful at all. Then, it is difficult to test it. Constructor theory is more like a law of laws, than laws of some particular physical systems. 
there are some basic principles in constructor theory. Maybe, falsifying these principles experimentally could be a way to falsify constructor theory. But, this is not very clear. Another often criticism is what new does it bring to the table. If constructor theory is based on the existing laws of physics, then can it say anything about new physics? With the example of quantum gravity, it seems it can. This also needs to be more explored. Finally, one should be able to obtain dynamical laws out of constructor theory. This is because, at the end of the day, dynamical laws are what help theorists and experimentalists to make predictions at the lab.